Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Geo here. Well, let's get started with this week's story. It's called One Simple Question. A quick drive, a slow walk, and my stomach felt like an old wrung out dish rag. I would made a decision about Colin Chamberlain, and knowing me, I had to act on it immediately. To break the ice, I'd bought a two-player game I thought Colin and I could try tonight. He had a nice game set up and a 65-inch TV with wraparound stereo. When he cranked up the bass on that baby, the windows visually vibrated. Once I'd worked up the courage, I'd ask him if he'd want to go with me to GameCon in two weeks. I had purchased tickets only an hour ago because I know he'll say yes. Besides, I got a discount because I'd bought them early. In case I chickened out, I'd put the tickets in an envelope and wrote, Would you be my date to GameCon? So I could simply hand it to him. Dad always said I had poor impulse control. I don't know what he was talking about. It took me five whole minutes to make up my mind and buy the gay man the tickets. Early evening, late November, the air was cold enough for a hooding if I didn't stay out in it too long. Colin lived in an apartment on the second floor. I had known him for a couple of months, ever since we'd met in economics. We both agreed that it was the most boring class. I ran up the stairs two at a time. A football game played way too loud on somebody's TV, and the beautiful smell of barbecue was heavy on the air. Colin lived in a unit about four doors down from the stairs. The sounds of the game came from his open door. Colin stood in front of his unit, holding a pair of tongs, the barbecue blazing away. I could fall in love with him. My height, green eyes, sandy hair buzzed short. He wore old jeans and a university sweatshirt with a hole in the elbow. We spent hours talking or texting about nothing. We spent even more hours playing video games. This was my chance to let him know I wanted to get to know him a lot better. How did you want your steak, Dad? Colin yelled. Some man inside his unit yelled, Medium, what's taking so long? About five more minutes, Colin said. Who's winning? I'll simply say you're going to owe me more than a steak. Colin had his family over. Not a good time to ask him out. I guess I should have called or texted first. Like Dad said, I always acted without thinking and often regretted it. It wouldn't take much to turn around and walk away. Colin would never know. How do you want your steak, Patrick? Colin said, glanced up, and gave me a little smile. His smile made coming over here worth it. How did you know I was here? I said. I heard you drive up, Colin said. He flipped one of the steaks over with a pair of barbecue tongs. You need to get that muffler fixed. It's either tuition or the car. I can't afford both. You better make your car top priority or you'll be riding the bus. What's up? I came to hang out, I said. I was bored. Come and join us. My family came over and they're watching the football game. My dad's favorite team is playing, Colin said. I should have texted or something, I said. You're busy. That's life. Come meet my family, Colin said. What's in the sack? I found a new game I thought we could try, I said. Sounds fun, but not tonight. Family's hogging the big screen. Come on in, and I'll introduce you, Colin said. Set your bag on the counter. Maybe we can play it after Dad's done with football. Colin took me inside, where the living room was filled with his roommate and a bunch of other people. He still held the barbecue tongs. Pat, that's my mom, Carol, my dad, Lawrence, my older sister, Kathy, and her husband, Ray, their baby, Wayne, and my baby brother, Craig. You already know my roommate, Andrew. Colin said, Everybody, this is my friend from economics class, Patrick, I was telling you about. Hi, I said. I'm in trouble. How could I remember all these names? You're the baby, Craig said to Colin. The sister, Kathy, fed Wayne something purple out of a baby food bottle. Wayne looked about one year old. What team do you like, Mr. Chamberlain said, smiling a little. Sorry, sir, I don't follow football, I said. Everybody loves football. Mr. Chamberlain rolled his eyes and snorted. I shrugged. 
You won't last long with this family, Kathy said. I had to convert Ray before Dad would even talk to him. Did you just call me sir, Mr. Chamberlain said. Yes, Mr. Chamberlain. Mr. Chamberlain said, you make me sound ancient. If you only get one chance to make a first impression, I just blew it. I'll bring your walker over, Grandpa, Mrs. Chamberlain said. It won't be long before you forget where your car keys are. Something happened in the game, and Colin's dad jumped up and whooped for joy. He shouted louder than the TV. I told you, I told you, but would you believe me? No. Honey, sit down, it's only a game, Mrs. Chamberlain said. It's nice to meet you, Patrick. You better learn to like football, Greg said. That's all Dad ever talks about. Ray said, quiet. They made fourth down with that play, and the ref is calling something. Don't panic. We'll win, Mr. Chamberlain grunted. You have ten yards to go, Ray said. How many times have we seen another team take control of the ball that close to the goalposts? Is something burning? Kathy said. Oh, no. We'll be back. She took Wayne and disappeared down the hall and into one of the rooms. Sis, don't change him on my bed, Colin said, shoving the barbecue tongs at me. Patrick, check the stakes, would you? Sure, I said, taking the tongs. Wait, sis, I'm grabbing a towel, Colin yelled and disappeared down the hall. What had just happened? I don't think I said more than hi. I raised the tongs to say something, lowered them, and went outside to the peaceful world of the grill. Tonight was definitely the wrong time to ask Colin out. His family talked nonstop about football. I don't know a thing about the game. Colin never talked about football. We always talked about games for the PlayStation or Xbox or even online games. Not sports. This was not my comfort zone. I'd never barbecued steaks before either. Hamburgers, yes. Hot dogs, yes. Veggie patties, yes. Various vegan vegetable things, yes. Kebabs, yes. Steaks, no. Four steaks sizzled on the grill. Four more marinated in some sauce. More noise erupted from the television. More cheering from Mr. Chamberlain. Andrew and Craig swore. I guess their team wasn't doing so good. I adjusted the grill, scooted the steaks over a little, and added two more. Colin had some kind of meat thermometer laying next to a plate, so I inserted it into the steaks. About 160. Is that good or bad for steaks? Sorry about that, Colin said, walking up behind me. Thanks for taking over. No problem, I said. That one's yours, Colin said, pointing at the newest one. How do you want it? Medium well, I said. As much as I wanted to ask him to the game con, now wasn't the time. I would have to wait. Did you get that paper done? Mostly, he said. It's taking longer to research than I thought. Really? I found a couple of websites that might help. Can you tell me about them? Something happened on the TV. Everybody yelled, especially Mr. Chamberlain. The brother-in-law swore. Colin, I'm sorry. You have a rag? Just a minute, Patrick, Colin said and disappeared inside. This was definitely the wrong time. I set the steaks that were up to temperature to the back of the grill, away from the coals, and put the rest of them on the grill. I went back inside to grab a plate. Colin knelt on the carpet with paper towels, trying to blot up purple baby food. Now wouldn't be the time to ask him either. I found a clean plate, filled it with the finished steaks, and took them to the family. Touchdown, Mr. Chamberlain screamed. He leaped into the air and played air guitar a foot away from me. Nobody can beat us now. Colin, you got ketchup? Talk about personal space issues. I stepped back, a little uncomfortable. You don't put ketchup on a steak, Dad, Kathy said, exiting the back room with a squirming, crying baby. Yes, I do, Mr. Chamberlain said. Colin? Colin looked up from the spill. It's in the fridge. I'll get it, I said. I did and set it down next to the empty plate. I took the plate outside for more steaks. Good thing I came back out because it was time to check the other steaks. Since mine was the most recent, it would take longer. Another two were done, so I took them into the house. It was a three-way argument between Mr. Chamberlain, Ray, and Colin. I tell you, Mr. Chamberlain said, meat is meat. Ketchup is a barbecue sauce. It's a lot cheaper than some of the other brands. It doesn't have a kick to it, Colin said. You want something good? It needs a little burn. Even just a little jalapeno. That would ruin it, Ray said. Something sweet and tangy. On meat, Mr. Chamberlain said. 
I set the steaks down and went back to the grill. Two to go. I preferred mine a little more cooked than they did, so I gave mine some extra time. Crazy family. I took the last steak in for them, then checked on mine. Colin, you overcooked the steaks, Mr. Chamberlain yelled. It's tough. Should I tell him that I cooked them? But Colin was already inside, so Mr. Chamberlain was yelling at Colin because he let me cook? Honey, ease up. Why do you always get like this when you're watching football? By the time my steak was cooked, they had finished eating. Another touchdown. Everybody cheered. Mr. Chamberlain screamed. Only a foot away from me. I felt like the puzzle piece trying to fit into the wrong puzzle. Coming over had been a mistake, and I would have left. Except, I still wanted to ask Colin to game con. I grabbed the dishes, and not knowing which team was playing, or even that much about football, I washed up the kitchen and put the dishes away. At least my bag with the game and the tickets was safe on the counter, just waiting for the right time. My chance to ask Colin would come, but it might not be until after the game. Colin was too busy with his family to even think about anything else. I should have texted, or called, or something. I couldn't have timed this worse. The sister ran the baby into the other room, again. Smell that diaper. I don't envy her. Another touchdown. Mr. Chamberlain slapped the side of the chair. This time, Andrew and Craig cheered. I can't believe it, Mr. Chamberlain swore, and he threw a tantrum. His plate fell on the floor in a splurry of ketchup. You've got to get that out before it stains, Mrs. Chamberlain said. Patrick, bring me the paper towels and the cleaner under the sink, please, Colin said. His voice carefully controlled, but anger surfaced just underneath. I had annoyed him by coming over tonight. My chances of him saying yes had gone down. I know just how to get that stain out, Mrs. Chamberlain said. It's okay, Mom. I've got this, Colin said, jaw set, mouth firm. I'm sure he was holding back anger. I was causing problems somehow. Dad should clean it up. He made the mess, Craig said. Later, Mr. Chamberlain said. I'll clean it up after the game. Then the stain will set, Mrs. Chamberlain said. I took the paper towels over and handed them to Colin, who shoved the plate at me. The tightness in his shoulders, the narrowing of his mouth, the way his eyes set. Colin was furious with me. Chance of a date was down to zero percent. I turned to take the plate back to the kitchen. Kathy and a now smiling Wayne stood at the counter wrapping a dirty diaper in a bag she found on the counter. A very smelly diaper. I could smell the poop from here. Something was on her hand. Was the diaper leaking? Modern diapers don't leak, right? Then what's that brownish greenish wet stuff on her fingers. I did not want to find out. She wrapped the bag tight around the diaper and put the whole thing deep into the overflowing trash bag, never noticing that there was something else in the bag. My new game and the game convention tickets. Before I could even say anything, she quickly washed her hands and called someone. I took a deep breath as my stomach shriveled. Ignoring everybody, nobody noticed me anyway, I went to the trash bag and found my bag. I opened it. The diaper had leaked its putrid, smelly contents onto the game and the tickets. The world stopped, and my heart dropped. She'd single-handedly destroyed the entire date I'd planned at GameCon without even realizing it. I folded up the bag and endured the heat that flooded my face. There went my appetite. This sucks. All that money I spent was now covered in baby crap. If I said anything, I'd sound like a whining child if they even noticed me over the game. I shook my head and my eyes burned. Everybody liked football but me. I had insulted Mr. Chamberlain. I had overcooked the steaks. Colin was angry with me. Game and tickets ruined my cue to leave before anything else went wrong. I put my steak in the fridge so Colin could have it for lunch and hid the pain behind a happy face. Colin, I've got to go. I'll see you at class tomorrow. The right team made a touchdown. Everybody cheered. Mr. Chamberlain screamed and jumped again, waving his arms like a cheerleader. Nobody heard me. 
It was stupid of me to come over. It was stupid of me to spend all that money. And it was stupid of me to think I had a chance with Colin. Colin said something I couldn't hear. I just wanted to be left alone. When I got back to my apartment, I made lots of cheesy pasta to dive into and watched random YouTube videos. How would I even face Colin tomorrow? Okay, let's switch to Colin's side of the story. The beat-up old car packed or drove thundered into the parking lot of my apartment complex. There was no mistaking that, baby. No other death trap made a racket like that. I placed the steaks on the grill and went back inside for the last one in the fridge. Why did it make me so happy to hear that car? Patrick and I had met in economics class, and I would have asked him to coffee, but he had asked me to dinner and a movie first. Tawny hair that curled at the edges, brown eyes that were ready to laugh, and a mouth that smiled at anything. He was the only reason I enjoyed economics, and the only reason I managed to pass the last test. Steak's almost done, Dad growled. My family had come over to visit. Specifically, Dad wanted to use my big screen to watch his favorite college football team play tonight. They have a good chance to make one of the holiday bowl games. They need more time, I said. I'm getting an extra one ready because Patrick just showed up. Patrick? Kathy, my sister asked. He's the guy from school that Colin likes, Mom said. Do I detect a little romance, Ray said. He's married to Kathy and was holding their baby, Wayne. Colin's in love, Craig sang. He's my baby brother. Are you sure you want him to meet us, Kathy said, nodding towards my dad. On football night? You guys are all right, I said. Mom faced my dad. Be nice this time. As long as he doesn't interrupt the game, he'll be fine, Dad said, smiling. Dad, Kathy said, not everything is about football. It is tonight, Dad said. I took a deep breath, grabbed the last steak from the fridge, and went out to my barbecue. Patrick's steak should have been in the marinade for an hour, but a few minutes was all it got. I tried not to stare as Patrick got out of his car, climbed the stairs to my floor, and walked over to me. How did you want your steak, Dad? I yelled back, pretending not to notice Patrick getting closer. Medium. What's taking so long? Dad yelled. About five more minutes, I said. Who's winning? I'll simply say you're going to owe me more than a steak. How do you want your steak, Patrick? I said. God, it was always good to see Patrick, and he'd come to see me. Could he feel the same way I do? I don't think I hid my smile very well. How did you know I was here? Patrick said. He ran his fingers through his hair, a plastic bag hanging from the other hand. The light from the setting sun hit him just right, adding sexy highlights to his entire body. God help me, I'm having a severe case of lust. I heard you drive up, I said, forcing my breath to slow down. I flipped one of the stakes over. You need to get that muffler fixed. It's either tuition or the car. I can't afford both, Patrick said. You'd better make your car top priority, or you'll be riding the bus. What's up? I said. I came to hang out, Patrick said. I was bored. Come and join us. My family came over, and we're watching the football game. My dad's favorite team is playing, I said. I should have texted or something, Patrick said, staring at the pavement a moment before looking up. You're busy. That's life. Come meet my family, I said. I'm glad you're here, I wanted to say, but I needed to play a casual. What's in the sack? I found a new game I thought we could try, Patrick said. Sounds fun. But not tonight. Family's hogging the big screen. Come on in, and I'll introduce you, I said. Set your bag on the counter. Maybe we can get to it after football. I led Patrick into the house, suddenly afraid of my family's reaction. I hope they don't embarrass me. Pat, that's my mom, Carol, my dad, Lawrence, my older sister Kathy, and her husband Ray, their baby Wayne, and my baby brother Craig. You already know my roommate, Andrew, I said. Everybody, this is my friend from economics class, Patrick, I was telling you about. Hi, Patrick said. You're the baby, Craig said to me, sneering. Just be quiet, I mouthed to Craig. Ray elbowed my brother while Kathy fed the baby some kind of baby food. Wayne hadn't pooped for two days, and she fed him a mixture of prunes and pears with ground flaxseed. If this didn't work, she'd take him to the doctor tomorrow. What team do you like? Dad said. 
smiling innocently at Patrick. Oh no, Dad and his football fetish. I don't even know if Patrick liked football. Dad put Ray through hell until Ray got interested. Sorry, sir, I don't follow football, Patrick said. That was the wrong answer. Dad will start on Patrick and probably drive him away. Everybody loves football, Dad said, sitting up a little in his chair. Does Dad have to do this every time somebody comes over? Stop it, I mouthed to Dad. You won't last long with this family, Kathy said. I had to convert Ray before Dad would even talk to him. Dad looked at me and smirked. Then he turned to Patrick. Did you just call me sir? Not again. Dad loved to torment anybody we brought over. Yes, Mr. Chamberlain, Patrick said. Patrick didn't realize that him being polite fed my dad's ego. I looked around the room for some help. Craig, Andrew, and Ray were glued to the game. Dad said, You make me sound ancient. He leaned on his chair and pretended to focus on the game. Patrick's mouth twerked into a little half-smile. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't know what to say either. Dad did this with every single date Kathy brought home and every single date I brought home. It's one of the reasons I moved out as soon as I could afford to. Why did he think this was funny? Doesn't he realize how many people dumped us because of it? Mom saw my distress. She knew what Dad was like sometimes. She said, I'll bring your walker over, Grandpa. It won't be long before you forget where your car keys are. Something happened in the game, and Dad jumped up and whooped for joy. I told you, I told you, but would you believe me? No. Honey, sit down. It's only a game, Mom said. It's nice to meet you, Patrick. You better learn to like football, Kathy said, feeding Wayne another small mixture of the pear prune stuff. That's all Dad ever talks about. Ray said, quiet. They made fourth down with that play, and the ref is calling something. Don't panic. We'll win, Dad grunted. They have ten yards to go, Ray said, tilting his head to Kathy. How many times have we seen another team take control of the ball that close to the goalposts? Is something Bernie? Kathy said, rising from her seat. Oh, no, we'll be back. Come on, she mouthed to me. She almost pushed me down the hall. I needed an excuse to follow her. I'd go with the obvious one. Sis, don't change him on my bed. I thrust the barbecue tongs on my friend to get him out of Dad's bizarre sense of humor. Patrick, check the steaks, would you? Sure, he said, took the tongs and went outside. At least he was away from Dad before things got worse. Wait, sis, I'm grabbing a towel. I yelled as Patrick left, and I ran into my room. Kathy sat on my bed, rocking Wayne back and forth. Calm down. Dad's doing it again, and he'll drive Patrick away. You like him? He's cute, and we like the same things, I said. I don't want to lose another potential boyfriend because Dad likes torturing them. I know, Kathy said. How many did he scare away from me? We'll figure out a way to keep him and Patrick apart. I shouldn't let him get to me like this, but sometimes Dad frustrates me. Have you tried telling him? Kathy said. Twice. He won't listen, I said. Okay, this is what we'll do, she said. You keep Patrick outside, I'll try to keep Dad distracted. Do you think it will work? Do you want to keep Patrick around longer than five minutes? I like him, I said. Kathy gave me a hug and we went back to the family. Sorry about that, I said, walking up behind Patrick. He stood outside, checking steaks with the meat thermometer. Thanks for taking over. No problem, Patrick said. That one's yours, I said, pointing at the newest one. How do you want it? Medium well, Patrick said. Did you get that paper done? Mostly, I said. Outside, it was safe to talk. I didn't have to worry about dad or football or anything. Patrick was good at essays. Maybe he can give me a couple of ideas. It's taking longer to research than I thought. Really? I found a couple of websites that might help, Patrick said, smiling. Can you tell me about them, I said. Some kind of commotion happened inside. Not now. Colin, I'm sorry, you have a rag? Ray yelled. Just a minute, Patrick, I said and ran inside. At least Patrick was outside. It seemed most apartments these days have light carpet. Mine was light beige. The baby food had spilled in all its purpley brown color on the light carpet. If I didn't get that up quickly, it would probably stain permanently, which meant no cleaning refund when I moved out. 
I had this wonderful solution I had found that would clean this up. The hall closet had my extra roll of paper towels. I would need a lot for this. I found the spray under the kitchen sink next to the full trash bag. I set the trash bag by the counter so I could throw the used paper towels in it. Patrick came inside as I knelt over the carpet, grabbed a plate, and headed back outside. Good. Dad was too busy watching the game to notice. Patrick came back inside with a plate of steaks. Dad noticed him. He had that mean little gleam in his eyes. Oh, no. Before I could say anything, Dad smiled like a lion going after prey. Touchdown. Dad screamed as loud as he could. Patrick jumped back a little. Dad leaped into the air and played air guitar right in front of Patrick. Dad's arms waved all over the place. Nobody can beat us now. Colin, you got ketchup? I am so embarrassed. You don't put ketchup on a steak, Dad, Kathy said, walking in with Wayne. Yes, I do, Dad said, still strumming the pretend guitar right in front of Patrick. Colin, this can't be happening. It's in the fridge, I mumbled. I'll get it, Patrick said. He got Dad the ketchup and got out of here. I got up from this bill and marched up to my dad. Would you knock it off? I'm not 16 anymore. Stop trying to ruin my dates. Why do you do it? It's funny, Dad said. Didn't you see the expression on Patrick's face? You're embarrassing me and ruining my life. Just stop it. Why? Ray stood up. You almost drove me away with that act. It's a good thing I love your daughter, because sometimes... Patrick came back in with more steaks. I glared at my dad. Ray did, too. I tell you, Dad said, noticing Patrick. Meat is meat. Ketchup is a barbecue sauce. It's a lot cheaper than some of the other brands. It doesn't have a kick to it, I said. You want something good, it needs a little burn. Even just a little jalapeno. That would ruin it, Ray said. Something sweet and tangy. On meat, Dad said. Patrick went back outside. Just settle down, Dad, I said. I threw the paper towels in the garbage bag and put the cleaner under the sink. It wouldn't hurt you to be nice to one of our dates for once, Kathy said. I'm only having a little fun. You are all too serious, Dad said. We're missing the game. The next few minutes were blissfully quiet. Dad smothered his steak with ketchup and held it on his lap, tried to cut it. Andrew's phone rang and he went to it back to his room. I don't think anybody was into football as much as my dad, or torturing our dates. Colin, you overcooked the steaks, Dad yelled loud enough so Patrick could hear. It's tough. I stared at Dad. Was he trying to embarrass me again, or drive Patrick away because I was mad at him? Dad, you know Patrick's watching the steaks. Be nice. Honey, ease up, Mom said. Why do you always get like this? Patrick came in with his steak and set it on the counter. Mom noticed Patrick and finished saying, When you're watching football... Dad's team made a touchdown, and of course, Dad made a scene about it. Why had we even said anything? Patrick started to clean up the kitchen. I stood between my dad and him, hoping to salvage some piece. Good news, bad news. At the same time, the prunes and pears are working, Kathy said, and ran Wayne back to my bedroom. I had placed three towels down to protect my bed. I hoped that was enough, because I think even my neighbors could smell the ripeness of that diaper. On the bright side... Kathy and Wayne didn't have to go to the doctor tomorrow. The other team intercepted the ball, and in a massive run down the field, some guy made a touchdown. Everybody screamed, except Dad. I can't believe it. Dad swore and pounded the chair. His plate fell on the carpet in a splurry of ketchup and meat juices. I stared at Dad, wanting to scream at him. Had he made the mess deliberately? You've got to get that out before it stains, Mom said. Patrick, bring me the paper towels and the cleaner under the sink, please, I said, keeping my voice steady. Mom must have seen how angry I was getting. I know just how to get that stain out. It's okay, Mom. I've got this, I said. Dad should clean it up. He made the mess, Craig said. I couldn't agree with him more. Later, Dad said. I'll clean it up after the game. Then the stain will set, Mom said. Patrick brought me the supplies without complaining. He picked up the plate and went back to the kitchen while I worked on the stain. Ray, my sister said, I hope you don't mind, but I sent an emergency order for more diapers to the store. They'll be ready for pickup in an hour. How's Wayne? Ray said. I didn't know a baby could poop that much, Kathy said, but he's happy now. Another big play. Dad again made a huge noise. The others did too, but not as loud. 
Patrick waved at me and said something, but Dad was so loud I didn't hear anything. I said, be quiet, Dad. Patrick walked out the door and it closed behind him. Patrick left so fast he forgot to take his sack. Dad had done it again. He had driven another day to wait. How would I even face Patrick tomorrow at class? He'd sit at whatever part of the room I wasn't at. Another chance at meeting somebody nice ruined, and all because Dad wanted to have fun. Once again, he purposefully wanted to embarrass me and my date. I got up, walked over to the TV, and flipped the button on the power strip. The entire entertainment system shut off. We were watching that, Dad said. Turn it back on. No. You've ruined my life for the last time. I don't want you back here. Ever. What are you talking about, Dad said. You heard me. Patrick just left because you had to have your fun. He's what, the third date you've driven away? I left home to get away from you and your games. Get out. It was just a little bit of fun, Dad said. You're taking this all wrong. You've embarrassed me. You've humiliated my friend until he ran out. And look at the mess you've made on my floor, I yelled. You didn't even try to clean it up. Colin, I know tonight was difficult, Mom said, but maybe your dad can apologize? Mom, how can the jerk apologize for driving another one of my friends away? Tell me how sorry he is. That won't bring Patrick back. How many times did you do that to my sister? Five? Ten? Every time she brought a date home? Thanks, Dad, for being so loving. Get out. Jerk, I'm your father. Don't ever call me that again. You act like a jerk, I'm going to call you a jerk. I said, just leave, jerk, so I can clean up after you, jerk, and figure out a way to get Patrick to talk to me again, jerk. But the game, Dad said. I don't care about football, I said. Disown me. Right now, I don't want to be your son. You're serious, Dad said. You don't like football? That's all you've heard? I don't like football, I yelled. Mom stepped between us. Let's settle down before we say things we might regret. But Lawrence, you went too far this time. You too, Dad said. I've told you before, Mom said. What you think is fun is a little extreme for everybody else. Colin, finish the stain. And Lawrence, you sit down and don't talk. But the game. Dad, Kathy said. Act like a big boy for once. You can check the score in the morning. Dad folded his arms and pounded. Mom found my vacuum and began cleaning the floor. Kathy handed Wayne to Ray and picked up plates and utensils and set them on the counter. Wasn't Patrick's bag on the counter. He didn't take it with him. I took the wad of ketchup-covered paper towels to the garbage. It stunk of baby poop. I opened it to throw the paper towels in, and there was Patrick's bag, stinking. I nudged it open. A very full diaper leaked inside, all over the new game, and an envelope that said, Would you be my date to GameCon? The envelope held something. I nudged the messy thing with a paper towel. Tickets and a receipt covered in baby poop slid out. Kathy, come here, I said. She walked over. Where did you find the bag you put the diaper in? Something was wrong with the diaper. It wouldn't seal right, she said. There was a bag on the counter. Look what was already in the bag, I said, and let out a long sigh. This night was getting worse. It was Patrick's. Kathy went pale. She carefully pulled the tickets out and the receipt. The game cost how much? They're that expensive? And the tickets? He was going to ask you out? That's why Patrick came over tonight, I said. Look at the date and time stamp. He just bought them. He really must like you to spend this kind of money, Craig said, looking over our shoulders. Used to, Ray said. Worst night ever. Look at us, Mom said. Our finest moment as a family. Ray, it's amazing you don't divorce all of us. It's a little late for that now, Ray said. You have to admit, Wayne pooped good. Ray, Kathy, why don't you take off and get Wayne to his crib? Mom, get Dad to his game, I said. I need some alone time to clean up and figure out how to fix this. Wayne to his crib, Dad to his game. You make me sound like a baby, Dad said. Hate to tell you this, Dad, Craig said, but if the crib fits. The point is... Dad said, we screwed up as a family, so we need to fix this as a family. What do you mean? Mom said. First, I guess I need to say I'm sorry for ruining your dates. I had no idea that you resented me that much and your dates disliked me enough to leave you. That's a start, Dad, I said, but you still drove Patrick away. I did, Dad said. You know Patrick best. How do you want to handle this? Dad, take the cleaner and work on the ketchup stain. Kathy, you and Ray have poop duty. Try and salvage anything. 
Craig and I will close down the barbecue and get the place cleaned up. Mom, I already got the vacuum out. Colin, Dad said. Yeah, Dad. Can we turn the game back on while we clean up? Back to Patrick. Colin sent me a text sometime after 10. Discovered your steak in the fridge. How come you didn't eat? Figured you could use it for lunch. I sent back. You didn't take the game with you. What happened to it? Should I tell him? No. It would be more diplomatic if I simply bought a new game. Besides, we probably would never get to it. What would I say? Hey, Colin, how would you like to play my new game? It's great, but we need to clean the crap off it first. Who am I kidding? I couldn't afford a new game until payday. The tickets? I might be able to have the game store reprint them. If the receipt wasn't covered in poop, I might as well not mention those either. I texted, we'll have to try it one of these weekends. And the tickets? Colin texted back. How did you know about those? Don't worry about it, I sent. His reply? A crying poop emoji. Did Colin know what happened? That's not possible. I closed the trash bag earlier tonight, and they've probably thrown it out. The doorbell rang. I set aside my third bowl of cheesy pasta, made sure I was somewhat presentable in my cut-off sweats and ratty old t-shirt, then answered the door. Colin was there, with his whole family, grinning at me. I am so sorry, Kathy said, before I even got the door open all the way. The game was in plastic, but I sanitized it anyway. Then I saw the note, and I felt terrible. You get this family around football, and we don't notice a thing. The tickets didn't get very dirty, Mr. Chamberlain said. Yes, they did, but we cleaned them up as best we could and placed them in a plastic bag, Mrs. Chamberlain said. Trust us to get in the way of romance. Lawrence, you have something to say? Mr. Chamberlain crossed his arms, and Craig nudged him. Dad? With a sigh, Mr. Chamberlain said, I'm sorry for my behavior, and I'll be nicer next time. Patrick, take it from one who's been there. It's a pretty good family, Ray said. We've got to get going. We have to pick up more diapers. Colin, are you staying, or do you want to ride? Craig elbowed Colin in the ribs. Colin held up the game and the plastic bag with the tickets and receipt. He had a duffel by his side. Patrick's choice. If it's okay, why don't we play the game all night and talk about GameCon? For breakfast, I brought your leftover steak and some eggs. Did Colin feel the same way about me as I did about him? Colin stared at me and bit his lips, eyes wide and pleading. Please? I opened the door and let Colin in. If we were a little late to economics tomorrow, or even missed it, I wouldn't mind.